Hello and welcome to the second video in our series on SQL review for table joins. This query is the last query we used in video number 16, the first part of joins. In this query we joined the tables sales order header with sales order detail and customer. Now this provides us with more information than what we could obtain from just querying a single table. Now very often we may be asked to provide some sort of quantitative information about each of our tables. For example in the sales order detail tables we find the information on the unit price, the unit price discount and the order quantity that was available for each of the products in the order detail. If we want to include that in our result set then we simply have to add those columns to our result set. But this is not particularly practical information. We can make the information more practical by taking the unit price, subtracting the unit price discount and multiplying by the order quantity, which would give us the total value for this detail line, which I will call line total. So there we have those results it's probably more practical if we can provide a total for an entire order. Now that will require us to add up all of these line totals that we've just calculated for a single order. And this is going to require aggregation. So we are going to have to remove the individual columns selected from the sales order header because we are going to group our result set by the sales order ID by the customer ID and we also want the customer's account number to still show and we also want the order date to still show. We'll have to remove the sales order detail ID from our select list and now we can create a sum of those line totals which will of course become the order total. So take a moment to consider this new query. In previous lessons you've reviewed how to create a group by. Grouping by is primarily done to provide aggregation. So in this case we are indicating that we want to group or aggregate on the sales order ID, the customer ID, the account number and the order date. And for each combination of these values, we are going to calculate the sum of this formula, which gives us the sale price for a single line item. So if we execute this statement, we now have each order listed only one time. In previous result sets, each order was listed as many times as there were detail lines for that order. But now our total result set is 31,465, which is the exact number of orders in our database. And the order total column is the result of that sum function that we've executed. We can find out additional information this way by adding, for example, a count. If we add a count, then for each order we will list the number of line items. So we can see that sales order 43,659 contained 12 individual items for a total value of $20,565 and about 62 cents. However, order number 43,663 only had one line item. So this provides useful information. And of course you can imagine we can use even more aggregate functions to provide additional useful information. We can continue to aggregate this information if we wanted to provide a total sales value for each customer. So in this case I'm, going, I'm interested now in aggregating by customer ID and account number. I'm no longer interested in aggregating by order date or sales order. ID. So instead I will take those columns out of my result set and of my group by and we will now execute this statement. Now my result set has decreased to 19,119 rows and you might expect that 
to be the same as the number of rows in the customer table. Let's check. We actually have 19,820 rows in our customer table. So we actually have more rows in our customer table than what we have in our result set. What happened? What happened to the 701 or so customers that are not included in this result set? Well, what's happened is very simple. Those are customers that have not placed any orders yet. And we will in a minute write a query to find those customers. But for now, what we do have is for each customer, their account number and the total value of the orders that they have placed over their time with us as a customer. We also have a listing of the number of line items for each customer. However, the number of line items may not be that particularly interesting. We may be more interested in determining the number of individual orders that were placed by these customers. We can do that as well, but we will have to use, in this case, the distinct keyword and count the distinct number of sales order IDs that we have in the sales header table. And you can see now that this is indeed different. We see that customer ID 11,012 has placed two orders for a total value of $81.26 and that the number of line items is five. Now we don't know where those five line items came from. We may have one order with one line item and the other order with four line items or some other combination of line items divided across those two orders. But this gives us the information that we need. Now, which count is the correct one to use? That depends on your business needs. It makes intuitively sense that managers are probably going to be more interested in the number of orders instead of in the number of line items. But it is possible that for certain types of analysis, you may need to use both. This concludes the second video in the join review. In the next video, we are going to examine some different types of join, namely the left and right outer joins. Thank you for watching.